here in the United States, living paycheck to paycheck has just become the new normal. And if you are like most people, as soon as you receive your paycheck, 100% of it goes to bills and other things. You don't save a penny and you cannot invest. But I wanna break down what is happening right now. We have a new report that just came out today. We got the new jobs report. In this report, unemployment went up. Wages, okay, they're slowing down. This is deeply concerning because again, more people are living paycheck to paycheck as we speak. So if you are living paycheck to paycheck or you know somebody that is, go ahead, hit that like button and let's begin. That's crazy that 52% of Americans say they need at least $100,000 per year in order to be financially comfortable. But why is that? $100,000 per year comes out to about $8,400 per month. How many of you are making $8,400 per month? That is $2,100 per week. That is $300 per day if you work seven days per week. But most people don't work seven days per week. In fact, many people don't even work a full five days. I wanna show you that in just a minute, but look at this. Today, the jobs report came out. It says US job growth totaled 175,000 in April, much less than expected, while unemployment rose to 3.9%. Now, let's talk about this. One of the things that we have had in our back pocket is that we have seen so many uh, jobs come back. We had over 10 million jobs available to the American people over the past you know, few months. Now it's you know, right about 8 million. One of the other things that we have had is that we have seen a job growth where jobs are coming back in different sectors and it's really helping the US economy. Well, things are starting to change. Let's read some of the key points here. It says non-farm payroll increased by 175,000 on the month below the 240,000 estimate from the Dow Jones consensus. Yeah, we missed it by a, what, 65,000? It's a pretty big miss. It says the unemployment rate ticked up to 3.9% against expectations it would hold at 3.8%. I want you to keep in mind this number though. 3.9% is our current unemployment rate. However, there's another rate that's over 7% that is a little more accurately depicts what our unemployment rate actually is. So I'll address that in a moment. It says a more encompassing jobless rate edged up to 7.4. That's what I'm talking about. And again, we'll address that in a moment. It's the highest level since November of 2021. Also says consistent with the recent trends, healthcare uh, led job creation with 56,000 rise. Uh, other sectors include showing significant increases included social assistance with a 31,000 gain, transportation and warehousing with 22,000 and retail with 20,000. Here's a big one. And this will matter. It says following the report, traders price in a strong chance of two interest rate cuts by the end of 2024. I want to touch on that for a moment because just the other day, uh, the Federal Reserve had their FOMC meeting, and from their FOMC meeting, there were a lot of uh, there was a lot of speculation that we are not going to see a rate cut in 2024. After this jobs report, there's speculation that we could see a a rate cut, and here's the reason why: the Federal Reserve is trying to uh, maximize employment. But at the same time, they want to keep the, the, the inflation rate at 2%. That is their target, a 2% inflation rate. We are you know, over 3%. Here's the, the reason why this jobs report could actually be good news to the Fed. Because as more people are unemployed, this means they have less money. They cannot go and spend their money in the economy. They may not even live paycheck to paycheck because they're actually 
running on a deficit where they have to use credit cards just to stay afloat for another month until they get a new job. But here's what you need to keep in mind. As more people are unemployed, they have less money to spend. If they have less money to spend, it actually has a, uh, it puts less pressure on the economy. And so it's less, less inflationary pressure. That's what the Fed wants is for us to stop spending money so that inflation or it decelerates. Okay. But the big thing is you are going to be, well, you're going to struggle because again, you don't have what everybody wants. Everybody wants money. If you don't have a job, you're not going to have money. So the Fed though would be very concerned about cutting rates because here's the big issue. The big issue is housing and shelter. Shelter makes up more than a third of the entire CPI report. And so if they go and cut rates, the concern though is people that have been sitting on the sidelines, just hoarding cash. Well, they're waiting to buy a home. They are just waiting on the sidelines. And as soon as rates start to go down, you're going to see more and more people jump in the housing market and try to buy. As soon as that happens, we are going to see more pressure on inflation. So that's going to be troubling once we get there. Now I want to show you a few other things though. Okay. Because again, right now we are seeing people living on paycheck to paycheck. This is becoming the new normal. And I want to show you a few reasons why here's one of them. This is from the job, the jobs report that just came out uh, this morning. It says wages also rose less than forecast. The average hourly earnings rising 0.2% over last month and 3.9% over the last year. Economists had expected to see a monthly jump of 0.3% in April and a 4% rise over last year. Here's what you need to keep in mind though. Okay. What is happening right now is we are seeing prices, um, for, well, for everything go up. Well, it's concerning. The reason why it's so concerning is because we just don't have the money. Okay. Yes. We saw that, um, we saw that, uh, you know, wages went up by 0.2%, right? 3.9% over the last year. But here's the problem. Inflation is 3.5%. Okay. Now I want to show you one other thing, and this is where we are starting to see a little bit of a, of a disconnect. Look at this. It says the length of the average work week fell last month to 34.3 hours. This came down from 34.4. So only a, t a tenth. Okay. Only one tenth it says the underemployment rate which includes the unemployed and those marginally attached to the workforce rose to 7.4%. Okay. Keep in mind what I was talking about just a minute ago, where unemployment is at 3.9%, but it says a more encompassing jobless rate edged up to 7.4, right? That's the reason why I wanted to show you this is because that is what we're seeing. Wages are slightly going up. But as wages go up just a little bit, your average hourly or your average work week goes down. I told you many people are not even working five full days. This is part of the reason why they're living paycheck to paycheck. Okay. And just think, let's say you make $10 an hour, but yet you are missing out on five hours every single week. That's $50 a week that you're missing out on. That's $200 per month. Okay. That's $200 per month that you are missing out on from your paycheck just because you are not working five hours a week. That's it. That's the reason why many people are living paycheck to paycheck. I want to show you a couple other things. Okay. Look at this one right here. Why are Americans living paycheck to paycheck? Well, well, I'm not going to go through the different generations. You can see that here, but the number one reason is high monthly bills. This could be things like a, um, a credit card. This could be things like your, your mortgage, your car payment, right? Just your monthly bills, right? Then lack of budgeting and financial planning. This is a big one. 
And I've talked about this before and I've had a lot of people reach out and ask for some help. One of the things that I'm most likely going to do, uh, you know, very soon is I'll be creating another, another YouTube channel and I'll be posting on that probably three to five times a week and talking about, you know, budgeting and, and finance, talking about um, investments and stocks and starting your own business, starting a, a side hustle, just so you put a little bit of money in your pocket. It doesn't have to be a lot. Maybe it's just $400 per month. For many people that are living paycheck to paycheck, $400 a month is going to be a, a godsend. So that is something that I plan on doing very soon. As soon as I do that, I will put the link here in the in the videos and, and tell you that yes, I put out a new video, go and check it out. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Another one is just low income. This is a big one. Okay, 43% say they're living paycheck to paycheck because they make a very low income. This is something that you can, you do have some say in this because if you are being paid very little and you live in a, in a very, uh, you know, good area, you know, there's, there's a lot of employment. Sometimes if you just move from one employer to the next, you'll get a small pay, pay bump. It might not be 50%, maybe it's only 5% or 10%. But if you get a 10% increase, let's say you're making $2,000 a month now, and they'll give you an extra 10%. That's $200 per month extra. That's $2,400 per year in additional income. Now, are you still gonna be living paycheck to paycheck? Possibly, but there's still an extra $2,400 per year that you will get. Maybe that helps out with a bill. And then I'll just read the rest of these. The unexpected emergencies, Okay, the majority of Americans cannot afford a $400 emergency. Uh, the increase uh, in the cost of living, yes, this is kind of goes into higher monthly bills as well. Um, social pressures, this is you know drinking, this is going to buy the new uh, you know Lamborghini because well your your buddy down the street just bought it, right? You're going to get the new Rolex, the the Rolexes that that were just released. No, maybe maybe get the Rolex from 10 years ago. Okay, it will save you some money, and it's still a very good timepiece. Okay, social pressures, it's a big one. And then it really falls off because then it goes down to here. Medical expenses, well, for Gen Z, it's 0%. They're not spending any money. It's pretty much baby boomers are spending there. Financially supporting family members. This one is, is uh, you know, it's not huge, okay, but it, it, is, uh, it is there. And then obviously debt. Debt for most people will simply wipe you out. Right now, with all these additional expenses, though, living paycheck to paycheck, what majority of Americans do is they have a credit card. Well, here's the problem with a credit card. It says nearly 60% of credit card holders in the U.S. live paycheck to paycheck. It says 40% of paycheck to paycheck consumers report super prime credit scores. 43% of all credit card or card holders have had a revolving balance on their credit cards in 2023, an increase from 41% in 2022. One of the other things that you need to understand is that here in 2024, the cost of uh, your credit card is, is uh, rising. It's going to get, it's going to get worse. So just understand that as it does, okay, as it potentially gets a little bit worse, you're going to pay more. You're going to pay more over the long run. Most people are gonna struggle just to get out of credit card debt, so don't be one of those people, all right? But I wanna leave you with that. Just know everything that has gone on, all the different policies, all the changes, everything, it's going against the American people, going against the lower and middle income households. And I just talked about this last night, and I told you that lower and middle income households are starting to panic. They're panicking because they can't afford the just basics, the necessities. So I'm gonna leave you with that, but let me know your thoughts. What do you think is gonna happen moving forward? So again, just wanna thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next 